So Affinity just dropped version three and honestly, it's kind of a big deal. And it's got a lot of designers asking, should I ditch Illustrator and then switch to Affinity? And not even just Illustrator because this new Affinity effectively combines their previous apps into one. So kind of like having Photoshop, Illustrator and InDesign all just merged into a single app, which is something I've personally wanted for years from Adobe. It's finally here. Now, don't worry, I'm still going to be doing plenty of Adobe stuff here on this channel, but I've also started a separate channel just for Affinity. And these videos will be short, quick tutorials to help you learn it fast. So if learning Affinity sounds interesting, I'll pop a link to said channel below. But now let's start with the price, the fact that there is none. So Affinity is now completely free and it's free forever, apparently. Now, has a corporation ever gone back on their word? Well, yeah, but the fact that they've reiterated the whole free forever thing multiple times now and even addressed this head on with a brief explanation of how this works from a business point of view in relation to Canva, which I think a lot of people were like wondering, well, how is this free? Why? You know, which is a fair question. So the fact they've addressed that is great. And to be honest, I like and appreciate this level of transparency so much more than a suit reading off a corporate word salad. Just no. So yeah, free forever, which is great if you want to get out of the subscription game and save some money at the same time. Now, feature-wise, Affinity 3 has leveled up even compared to their previous version 2, which was very good to be fair. They've now added a proper image trace so you can convert images to vectors and everything runs off a single .af file type, meaning no more switching between apps or juggling exports or whatever. You can do raster, vector and layout all in one place. And it feels seriously fast, like you can zoom in millions of percent if you really want to. And uh, so yeah, the tech under the hood is very impressive indeed. Now, when it comes to the UI, it's clean, it's minimal, and instantly I could tell that this software was built by designers for other designers who clearly understand some of the frustrations that creatives experience. Also, you can now open other file formats like PSD and .ai Illustrator files. The Illustrator stuff has translated pretty well. The Photoshop, so far it's been okay, but of course there's gonna be features like smart objects that Affinity doesn't support. So I'd recommend just trying a bunch of your own files and seeing for yourself how smooth that process is or isn't. Because when I opened a really complex Photoshop document, it wasn't perfect. And if you rely on certain effects or plugins and things, like there might be a few issues there especially if you're working with something like Smart Objects, which I don't think Affinity supports. So you open that file up and it's like, Oh, what are you doing? We don't support this. Go on, get out of here. Also, if you do work in an agency or a team that is fully Adobe, switching might make collaboration a bit of a pain and there's no like direct send it to After Effects. So if you're doing animation as part of your workflow, just something to bear in mind. That if you mainly do photo editing, locos, icons, locos? Logos, icons, illustrations, or any print work, I think you're just gonna love how simple everything feels. There's no app switching, there's no lag. It's just really clean and very easy to use. Now, if you already know Illustrator, I think you're gonna pick Affinity up pretty quickly. Most of the tools feel familiar and they even use the same keyboard shortcut in many cases. And the biggest hurdle for me at least is just getting your head around certain features and how they work, especially if they behave one way in Illustrator, but then slightly differently in Affinity. Slightly differently, slightly different, anyway. Words are hard. But rest assured, I'm going through these hurdles myself now, and there will be videos coming out on the other Affinity with Dansky channel covering how to navigate some of these differences. So hopefully I can save you a little bit of frustration. So to summarize, should you switch? That is the big question, right? Well, it depends what's important to you and how you work. For example, if you're paying for Adobe every month and mostly use Illustrator and Photoshop, it's definitely worth trying Affinity 3. Or if you'd like to save money and just get out of the whole subscription thing altogether, then yeah, this is probably the best time to make that leap. <laughs> That's me leaping. What are you laughing at? You laughing at my leap? That's a nice boulder. That's a nice boulder. Trick, what you do, man? Anyway, right, um, I don't know what happened there. And if you do rely on integrations with some of other... <laughs> Let's try that again. And if you rely on integrations with some of Adobe's other apps like video editing, animation, or like a team workflow, 
it's probably going to be a little bit harder. Plus, at least for now, Adobe is still recognized as the industry standard. So a lot of companies will still be using it. So maybe getting a job at a company may require some knowledge of the Adobe suite. Or maybe not. I don't know. Watch this space as we may start to see things shift with such an excellent and yet free offering from Affinity. So yeah, that's my two cents on Illustrator and Affinity and whether you should switch right now. If you do have any questions, pop them down below and I'll try and help out. But otherwise, I will see you in the next one. I switched to Affinity yesterday. Come on now, let's all have some fun. Bye bye, Illustrator, no more subscription. Oh, okay. <laughs>